Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. The president... The president today is still basking in the afterbirth of his State of the Union. <laughs> this morning, he tweeted, Thank you for all of the nice compliments and reviews on the State of the Union speech. 45.6 million people watched. The highest number in history. Okay? First, that's not true. Uh, second, uh, it's a lie. 45.6 million isn't the record because Obama's first State of the Union had 48 million viewers, and the most viewed was Bill Clinton's in 1993, which had 66.9 million viewers. Look, it doesn't matter how many people watched, but what does matter is that the president needs to lie about it and then somehow get away with it. This is the new world we live in. So let me just say right now, in advance, congratulations to President Trump on winning the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> well played. Yeah. So good. Played a game. So good. Also, you make a great Black Panther. <laughs> but the president did break one record because this was the most tweeted about State of the Union in Twitter history. Yes, Twitter history. <laughs> It's like regular history, but shorter and not true. <laughs> and somehow more Nazis. <laughs> Trump gave a speech today at a Republican retreat in West Virginia, uh, where he also talked about how great he did at the State of the Union. African American and Hispanic unemployment have both reached the lowest levels ever recorded. That's something very, very special. <laughs> and when I made that statement the other night, there was zero movement from the Democrats. They sat there, stone cold, no smile, no applause. Yeah, you'd think the Democrats would applaud since that's all because of Obama. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you. Look. I don't get why black people don't like me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to call Jay-Z a son of a bitch on Twitter. <laughs> And Trump gave his first year in office a pretty glowing review. But now we've fulfilled far more promises than we promised. <laughs> Entirely. I... I don't know. I don't know. I hesitate to drag logic kicking and screaming into this conversation, but you can't fulfill more promises than you promised. That's just taking credit for stuff that happened. <laughs> Look at the sun, rose again. You're welcome. <laughs> now, most of the speech was just the president looking for people in the audience. It was a presidential see and say. Where's Don Young? Where is Tim? Tim. Kevin, where are you, Kevin? Where are they? Senator? Good, Senator. Where's Oren? Oren. Oren is... I love listening to him speak. He said once, I am the single greatest president in his lifetime. Now, he's a young man, so it's not that much, but... And he actually once said, I'm the greatest president in the history of our country. And I said, does that include Lincoln and Washington? He said, yes. Trump says... <laughs> Trump says 83-year-old Hatch called him greater than Lincoln and Washington. Someone has dementia, and I wish it was me. <laughs> so... <laughs> He also shared some inspirational words about the future of the country. For Americans, nothing, absolutely nothing, is out of reach. Because we don't know the meaning of the word quit. Maybe not, but a lot of Republican congressmen know the meaning of not seeking re-election this year. <laughs> and more time with their family. They want to spend more time raising money with their family. And Trump ended with his best tough guy impression. And there's one more very important promise we're keeping. No longer are we making apologies for America. We don't apologize anymore. We also don't learn from our mistakes. We just barrel forward blindly without any reflection at all. Happy Black History Month, everybody. <laughs> See, they're clapping. They're clapping. Why couldn't... Why couldn't the Democrats clap? Oh. 